The information we have on the identities of the primordial one and the four shining shades is so little that we literally need a microscope to see it. We only have the littlest of floor crumbs on who they were or what their role on the ancient civilization was. Which makes a lot of sense since almost all information on the ancient unified civilization and the primordial one was lost to time. Pretty ironic since one of the four shades had the ability to manipulate time. In my last video where I talked about the real world inspirations of the ancient unified civilization, we came to a conclusion that it was inspired by the ancient Greco-Roman world. One factor I didn't mention there though is the religion of the Greco-Roman world because I wanted to save it for this video. There were very, very many religions and dare I say cults during the Greco-Roman era, but the most fitting one I can find for the ancient unified civilization's lore is Orphism. In the Before Sun and Moon book, we were introduced to a character Fanes. They were said to be the god who was birthed from an egg, who then uses the eggshells to separate the heavens from the microcosm of the world. And in Orphic tradition, they believed that the universe was created because of a cosmic egg where the primordial deity of creation of Fames was born from, who then created the universe. Genshin Impact's story of Fames seems to be directly inspired by the Orphic story of Fames, and it doesn't seem like it's just a coincidence at this point. Therefore, we can probably conclude that the ancient unified civilization had a religion similar to Orphism. In the Before Sun and Moon book, Fames was mentioned to be a candidate for the identity of the Primordial One. However, I beg to differ. I believe that Fanes was not the Primordial One themselves, but instead one of the shades of the Primordial One. Alright, so if Fanes isn't the Primordial One, who is it then? Snakes, 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 snakes. We see weird snake symbolism everywhere when it comes to the old civilization, and even the entire game itself. And in most symbolism we see, the snake is usually wrapping around something or someone. One example of this is the Gnostic Chorus where a snake is seen wrapping around a clam with a pearl. Another example of this is the statues we see before entering Enkanomia which seems to be like a snake wrapping itself around some sort of monolith. And if we take a look at the descriptions and the illustrations of the Orphic Egg, we can also see a snake wrapping itself around the egg that has fanes within it. And that snake in Orphism is the goddess of necessity, Ananke. Ananke, along with the god of time, Kronos, created and crushed the primal egg of creation, using their serpentine form and their burst forth, was fanes who then created and set order to the universe. So what I'm trying to say here is that fanes was created to create the universe and was not the primordial being who was born ever since the beginning of time. He was created. Fane's creators, however, Ananke and Kronos, was self-formed and existed ever since the beginning of time. I mean, Kronos is literally time personified. Which is why I come to a conclusion that the identity of the primordial one is either Ananke or Kronos. Kronos? Not so much, however, since one of the shades of the primordial one, Istaroth, share the same ability and title as Kronos, which I'll get onto later. Henceforth, if Kronos isn't fitting to be the primordial one's identity, then Ananke would be the most likely identity of the primordial one. Ananke is the personification of necessity and inevitability. She is considered one of the most powerful deities who has complete dominion over fate and circumstance. Mortals, as well as gods, respected her power and wouldn't even dare to fight her. She is also the mother of the Moirai, more known as their common name, the Fates, which give her the power to influence their decisions, making her able to control fate itself. To get to the etymology of her name, Ananke came from the common Greek noun Anankai, which means force or constraint. And in ancient Greek literature, the word is also used to refer to fate or destiny. She's also commonly represented and depicted as a woman holding a spindle sitting above the morai, looking as though they are weaving fate. She seems to be absolutely fitting to Genshin Impact's themes, right? Fate, inevitability, destiny, weaving fate. The characters in Genshin are constantly talking about their fate 
fates. Dangelef always mentioning how fate is somewhat controlling what is going on, the loom of fate operation, wishing with different kinds of fates, and so much more. A Greek deity who has the ability to control fate itself, being the inspiration for the mastermind, puppeteer, and the primordial god in a story where the concept of fate is used a little bit too much, is pretty fitting if I say so myself. Now that we have identified who the Primordial One's inspiration would be, we can use that information to identify the identities of the four Shining Shades. We'll be seeing which characters in Genshin's lore might be one of the Shades. Then, since the story of the ancient civilization was inspired by Orphism, we'll see what other gods in Orphic mythology are related to Anake, and then connect the two things together. First off, let's theorize who the four Shining Shades might be in Genshin Impact. So far, we already have Istaroth and Fanes confirmed to be two of the Shades. As for the other two, we have to get more theoretical and speculative to figure out who they are. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the other two Shades of the Primordial One is Paimon, or the Three Moon Sisters, and the Unknown God. Might be hard to believe, I know it really is, but you cannot tell me that Paimon, an enigmatic character who has huge knowledge about Teyvat and have weird Paimon's bargains in the wishing menu, triquetra motifs, and was fished out of the sea in the same general location area where the uncharted Istaroth Island is located at, is not one of the shades. And don't even get me started on the unknown god, the ultimate Shekhov's gun, a person who is insanely powerful, is shown in the domain murals which depict the Prime one and seemingly place the two travelers into Teyvat strategically to fulfill some sort of plan instead of killing them because it does seem like the primordial one along with their shades are using the traveler for a certain master plan to get back into power and to defeat the second who came seeing as though the unknown god placed them into Teyvat in purpose instead of killing them Paimon guiding the traveler the entire way Istaroth messing with time and Fanes being Fanes uh, anyway, more of this theory on the next video I'm gonna be making about the Primordial's master plan, but uh, anyways, Paimon, the Unknown God, Fanes, and Istaroth. Now that we have the four shades of the Primordial Ones figured out, let's try to find their Orphic Greek God counterparts. Let's start with Istaroth, which I previously mentioned that they could be the Orphic God of Time, Kronos, who was the god that created the Cosmic Egg along with Ananke that hatched Fanes. The main reason why I think Istaroth is Kronos is that they both have time powers. That's literally it. I don't have any other supporting reason as to why Istaroth is Kronos. What I do have, however, are a couple of flaws that contradict this theory. So instead of trying to support this theory, I'm contradicting it. One, according to the Before Sun and Moon book, Istaroth has another name, Kairos, which is one of the few words that define time in ancient Greek. The other word is Kronos. And although both these words, Kairos and Kronos, refer to time, they both have different meanings. Kairos would be the word to describe the opportune time in moment, while Kronos is the sequential movement of time. And two, to add to the previous point, there is also already a Greek god of the opportune moment in time, Kairos. So, Kronos and Kairos are two widely separate meanings and characters, but what do they have in common? They're both gods of time, and they both refer to time. So I'm rolling with it anyway. And yes, you are free to correct me because this is literally being held up by glue. Next up, we got the unknown god. Now, I haven't played Ohonka yet, you know, crucify me, I, am, I apologize, but I think that we've all heard of the theory of the unknown god being the herser of the void or at least having a connection with them, like we have all heard of that theory because apparently there isn't much of a difference with their power, appearance, and the character. Now that's a pretty cool theory honestly. If the unknown god does have a connection with the herser of the void, then the Orphic Greek god inspiration of them would be the personification of the void. Chaos. Another depiction of the deity Chaos in the Orphic Theogenies is that they are the primordial mix of elements, and in the Three Realms Getaway Story event, it's said that the Seven Sovereigns were able to harness the power of the primordial elements. However, they were all defeated by the Primordial One and the Four Shining Shades. So there might be a possibility that if the Unknown God was one of the Four Shining Shades who fought in the battle against the Seven Sovereigns, then they probably figured out how to harness the elements as well, the Primordial Elements, making them some sort of Primordial mix of elements. Maybe this would explain how insanely powerful the Unknown God is. Lastly, we have Paimon. 
In one of my previous videos where I talked about the meanings of the Triquetra and Genshin Impact, one of the theories I mentioned is how the Triquetra could be the symbol of the three moon sisters in old Teva. So this would probably mean that Paimon, who has a Triquetra symbol in her outfit, have a connection with the three moon sisters. Maybe she was a moon sister herself or maybe she's all three moon sisters combined into one. Another thing with the Moon Sisters is that they reigned over the skies and the stars during the Primordial One's era of civilization. If they reigned over the stars, this would probably mean that they reigned over the constellations too, right? The same constellations that dictate the fates of the people of Teyvat. Earlier when I was describing Ananke, I mentioned the Moirai, the three goddesses of fate and the daughters of Ananke. So it would make sense if the three Moon Sisters were inspired by the Orphic deities of fate. So basically, Paimon is related to the Three Moon Sisters and the Three Moon Sisters are related to the Moirai. I know it's a stretch, but trust me, I guess. Another reasoning I can bring up for Paimon having a connection with the Moirai is that Paimon can literally control fate whenever we go to the wishing menu. We can even see this whenever we go to the Paimon's bargain section of the wishing menu where she exchanges star glitter with intertwined fates, acquaint fates, weapons, materials, and characters. So, you know, this theory might sound pretty whack, but it's also pretty uncanny. So that's pretty much all of them. The identities of the Primordial One and their shades that we have identified are as follows. The Primordial One, Ananke. Shade number one, which is Istaroth, with the Greek equivalent being Kronos. Shade number two, which is the unknown god, with the Greek equivalent being Chaos. Shade number three, Paimon, with the Greek equivalent being the Moirai. And of course, shade number four, Fades. This theory is 100% just crackpot theorizing, and I bet I am going to be proven wrong immediately anytime soon, seeing as though this theory is literally being held up with tape, and not even the strong type of tape, you know, not even flex tape, it's literally being held up with paper tape or something. So take all of what I said with a grain of salt, but also build upon it. Because the old civilization system of gods was probably inspired by the Orphic beliefs or Greek myths in general. I really like uh, Greek mythology and Genshin Impact, and I thought, hey, these two kind of have similarities. What the heck? I should make videos on this. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings about Greek mythology and Genshin Impact.